Well, we're now joined by Nahid Nenshi. Uh, Mr. Nenshi, thank you for uh, taking the time again. Hello, it's so great to be here with you. Well, you know, a, a very uh, big news that you announced, and I, I do want to begin our conversation right now with this new polling data that came out this morning, again from, from Palace Data, and it says of all the leadership hopefuls hoping to replace Rachel Notley, you would have the best position to maintain the party's current level of support. Uh, how do you react to that poll? Well, you know, I sure hope that the actual answer is that of all the people uh, who are running, I have the best chance to defeat Danielle Smith. Um, and we certainly got a little bit of work to do left, uh, if you believe that poll. But, you know, that's not the only reason I'm running. Uh, certainly it is something that a lot of party stalwarts, a lot of party members have latched on to. You know, I started this campaign, well, not this campaign, I started my thinking about whether to do this by talking to party members and people who've never voted NDP in every corner of the province. And I was asking a question that I swiftly realized was the wrong question. And the question was, do you want to be ideologically pure or do you want to win? And I probably discovered after one conversation that that was entirely the wrong question. The actual question was, who can help Albertans understand that the values of this party are also their values? Albertans from every corner of the province. And a lot of folks have, think, have been saying, you know, because you bring a fresh perspective and clear eyes, but you share our values, that you might be the best poised to welcome more people into this house that we've built. Okay, poised to do so. Do you think you could do better than Rachel Notley? Uh, she did come very close to, to winning again in the last provincial election. Do you think you'll do better? Well, I hope so. I mean, that has to be the goal. Uh, when you're in politics, like it or not, the goal is to be in government, to be able to do the things that you want to do. And it's true. If you took a very simplistic point of view of it and you said, all right, well, you know, uh, the it was a, it was an interesting campaign, the last one, because in some ways the UCP did very well in terms of the overall popular vote, but their vote was very concentrated. And so a difference of some 2000 votes uh, in the right ridings in Calgary would have flipped the election and led to an NDP majority government. Now, if you were going to be very simplistic about it and just overlay a map of where I won three times in Calgary over where the NDP needs to win in Calgary, you'd have an NDP majority government. But of course, it's not that simple. Uh, the new leader has to fight to win every single vote. You know, every vote in Edmonton, every vote in Calgary, every vote in the remainder of Alberta. And there are three years now until provincial elections. So the new leader needs to be willing to make the commitment to go into every Tim Hortons and A&W and every town in Alberta and talk to people about how the UCP is not actually the Conservative parties of the past, that Peter Lougheed, even Ralph Klein, would probably be uncomfortable in that party, but that the NDP, despite that name and whatever baggage comes with it, is actually the party that represents the median Alberta voters' values. Okay, when you say that, I'm wondering what type of reaction you get from lifelong New Democrats, because, you know, when you talk about this this label versus uh, being ideologically uh, really resolved to be a New Democrat, you yourself described yourself as purple, somewhere between Tory blue and liberal red. What's been the reaction from lifelong New Democrats to, to you throwing your hat into the race? What's really been interesting in this first week, I launched exactly a week ago, and the momentum and the excitement has been far beyond my expectations. It was like nothing that I would have thought would have happened. I've been talking to random people on the street in Calgary and Edmonton and in between uh, who just walk up to me and say, thank you for running. Thank you for giving us some optimism about this province. And I know that sounds a bit weird and a bit arrogant to say, but it feels a little bit like the end of my 2010 campaign when we really had, had tapped into something that people were getting very excited about, a sense of optimism they hadn't felt about the city before, and hopefully something that they're feeling about the province. Now, I will tell you that, you know, you have to have strategy in a campaign like this. And strategy one is to convert the existing members into supporters. Strategy two is to sell new memberships. And, you know, we've blown the lights out on both of those. This morning, I saw an endorsement from someone who did a video endorsement on my website at nancy.ca who just said, I've been a member for 50 years, and this is exactly what we need. And it was very much a message to the party faithful. I've also been excited that I have four um, current MLAs who endorsed me within the and, and across the ideological spectrum within the existing party. 
that all, only one candidate has more MLA endorsements than I do. I've also got a number of former MLAs and candidates who have endorsed me. So I've been very warmly welcomed by the people already within the party, much more so than a lot of my campaign folks would have thought. Okay, so so more than, than you expected. But in terms of grassroots NDP, as they will be very important in any provincial campaign in terms of a ground game, do you, do you think you have their excitement, their endorsement? So far, so good. Um, you know, we will have to go through this family discussion with the other candidates, who I must say are terrific. You know, I'm running against five other candidates, one with deep roots in the party uh, through the labor movement, and the other four existing MLAs, all super smart, super capable, amazing women uh, who are running. And I know that the party will come together afterwards. But as I say, I've actually been surprised, particularly by the number of NDP stalwarts in Edmonton and particularly in rural Alberta, who have come out and said, no, we're very excited about your campaign. Um, those were probably the, the most eye-opening moments for me in this past week. Okay, well, it's just begun, so we're watching closely. But, you know, before you go, Mr. Nenshi, I did also want to get your thoughts on another matter altogether, and this is the debate over the carbon levy. Uh, several premiers, mainly Conservative, are calling on Ottawa to drop the April 1st increase to the levy. But uh, as you know, BC's premier, one of only two NDP governments in this country, uh, he says it's all just political baloney. Where do you stand on the issue? Well, you know, at the end of the day, that increase to the levy, I think, uh, is relatively small, but the federal government has, I think, not managed this particularly well. Um, you have a price on carbon or you don't have a price on carbon, and ultimately they need to be able to explain to Canadians what the purpose of this is and how it's making a difference on our climate change targets. You know, uh, some of my opponents in this race have talked about, have mused about their thinking about the whether or not Alberta should have a carbon levy, but here's the thing. This is a federal levy. If there is a Liberal government in place at the time of the next Alberta election, we will have to have a price on carbon. And if so, there are three choices. Choice number one is a federal carbon tax. Choice number two is an Alberta carbon tax with the attendant bureaucracy. Uh, choice number three is a cap and trade system that I'd really need to be convinced on. Um, so there'd have to be some sort of carbon price. If we have a Conservative government federally uh, by the time of the next Alberta election, there will likely be no carbon levy federally. but the UCP likely will have developed zero climate policy in Alberta. So we'll have to be starting from scratch to really think about what our climate change policy will be. But ultimately, this is a lot of political posturing from people who have no control over the situation, saying what they would like to see. And that's just not really the kind of politics that I practice. Uh, Nenshi, uh, thank you for this. I always appreciate the time. Uh, we'll be watching the campaign. Thank you so much. It's going to be an exciting several weeks.